This is a cut down version of Photo Walkthrough episode number 125. In today's show we're going to be taking a look at one of the brand new features of Photoshop CS5, the Puppet Warp tool, to see if it's really worth upgrading to Photoshop CS5 and get all these new features. If you'd like to find more Photo Walkthrough episodes, they're all free, or if you'd like to find the full version of this one, please head on over to photowalkthrough.com and search for episode number 125. This is a, a, a picture of me doing a, a shaler jump. Uh, let's open that image. Got a, a reasonable selection of me. Let's just um, see if we can make this um, uh, warp in a in a natural looking way. So we've got the puppet warp tool here, which is under the edit menu, um, and by default, you will come showing you this mesh. And what this is doing, as you can see, is it's sort of turning the image into a series of triangles. Um, and the reason it does that is so that when you come to drag it around, it can resize the individual triangles, which gives it a much more natural uh, look to the way the 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 image is warped. Um, so. We can turn that mesh off. That's not very uh, not very useful, except to say that uh, um, there are a couple of different meshes. You can have more points if you want, or fewer points if you want. Um, we'll leave this on normal for now. We'll turn off the mesh, and here's how it works. You can put pins in, and when you put a pin in, that is sort of fixes it down. So I'm just clicking a couple of pins either side of my hips there, uh, and let's put one in my knee um, and one in my foot. Now, if I click on the one in the foot. I can drag that and you can see that it, it's moving relatively naturally. Um, if I was to drag it too far it would make it would start to bend so that my, my leg starts to look like it's made of rubber. If that happens too much you can put a point in again and sort of straighten it out again. Um, but what I was going to do here is just because I'm, I'm looking awfully dorky in the way I'm jumping here so let's let's just try and make this a slightly more elegant looking jump. Um, just make it look like I was doing some sort of dance move. There we go. Let's straighten out that foot. There we go. Looking a bit more like a dancer now. Well, all except for the arms, anyway. But you get the point. Now, just just to demonstrate where it does go a little bit wrong. Um, if I put a, a couple of points in, so that I'm going to move the arms. Um, let's just pin the head down so the head doesn't move. Um, if I grab this arm and I click on that point, if I hold down the Option or Alt key, you can see we get these little turny, turny points. And I can turn that arm um, and keep the arm nice and straight, which if I was to do a point on the arm up here and start dragging it around, you can see the arm starts to bend. Um, so sometimes it's worth doing that. those... Um, so if I undo that point, take that, pen, that pin out, it's sometimes better if you want to keep a, a, um, something undistorted to do it this way. That means you've got to have no pins further down the arm, though. So if you wanted to do that, um, you'd need to. If you wanted to keep the arm straight, you would need to move it from this pin first, and then pin the hand. If you wanted to do something further down the hand. So the point is, you need to do things in the right order sometimes. If I've wanted to move the tips of those fingers, for example, I could do that. But I would need to have turned it from the shoulder first, otherwise the arm is going to get start, start getting bent and distorted. Now here's another problem. Um, this arm is very close to the face, so if I was to, to try and drag that arm down, you can see it's moving the face with it. And if I was to, because you can see the arm's bending now, I was to try and straighten that arm, it's all going to go completely cockeyed. And it's simply the fact that the arm is very close to the face, and even though there is transparency in between, um, we are stretching the image as a whole. Not, uh, it, it's not separate. It looks to our eyes like it ought to just, it ought to just separate out, and this, this gap between ought to get wider. But it doesn't, and it's because it is basically one flat image with with some transparency applied to it. So that's something to be aware of. You know, there are occasions where it's not going to work quite the way you expect. It worked beautifully on the legs. But in the case of the arm here on the left, on that right arm, it really doesn't work too well at all. Let me show you the sort of thing it does work very well for. If I press OK on that and, and, and let it apply those changes, and I can close that image, I don't, I don't want to keep that. OK, 
Okay, so him, let me show you somewhere where it does work really well. Um, I've just chosen the picture of me with the layer mask, and I'm going to go edit, puppet warp, and I'm going to just pin those shoulders in place, and um, I'm going to put a pin in the neck there, and hold down the option of Alt key, and you can see, if I wanted to straighten the head, um, as long as I'm not turning it too far, I can I can change sort of the set of how I'm standing, uh, just that little bit. Maybe maybe I was maybe I want to look a little bit more sardonic. Maybe turn the head more to one side, or maybe we don't like my posture. We want to straighten it up a little bit. Um, let's let's straighten that head. I think we need also just because we've got a bit of a shear going on in the head there. Let's just correct that, and then we need maybe need to change the shoulders a little bit and you can see that it's also moving the whole bottom here so we need to if we want to keep things all the way to the edge of the picture put some pins in there push them out to the edge straighten it all back up again now you can see the point I'm trying to make here is we can use these things um, to change the position of things. We can change the set of the way somebody's standing, but the, it affects the whole image. It's always affecting the whole image. You need to keep an eye on how in, and everything else in the image is getting distorted because it is possible for things to go a little bit crazy with the way they get distorted. Uh, we've got a couple of different modes for here for how the distortion works. Uh, if you go for the distort version, you can see it does some really crazy crazy stuff. Um, if you go for the rigid version it keeps things much more rigid and, and in this case that version makes my face look much less distorted than it did. So um, uh, I think rigid and normal work very well most of the time. Normal is a good sensible default. If you find things get a bit squidgy um, try rigid that sometimes sorts them out. Um, now let me show you one thing where, where this doesn't work as well as you might hope. Um, I'm going to open a, a panorama. Now, one of the things you can do with the, with the Puppet Warp, so if we go to Edit, Puppet Warp, um, one of the things that you sometimes get in panoramas is you sometimes get uh, a sort of a weird arcing effect. Now, uh, so things that should be straight lines become sort of, sort of curvy lines. Um, what I'm going to try and do here, because I haven't really got a, a curve in the horizon, I thought I might try and straighten this bridge out. So if I put a pin at each end of the bridge, and then one in the middle, and drag it down, you can see that I can straighten that bridge out pretty well, not too bad. Um, it of course affects the rest of the image. Now in the case of uh, straightening uh, um, a curved horizon or something, you probably want that, and that's fine. Um, but what you won't be doing is a lot more than that. Um, if, for example, I wanted the, uh, the the pillars underneath the bridge here to to also straighten out, um, so that they, because at the moment they bow as well, what I won't be doing is putting pins under the bridge and dragging that out to try and get those those pillars into a nice straight line because as you can see it's dragging the bridge above down so I would need to put more pins in to drag those back up and try and straighten that bridge at the top again more pins at the bottom to try and drag that down and all of a sudden we've got we've got a bridge that looks like it's almost a suspension bridge it's all warped and it's falling apart big time uh, it just it doesn't work that well for this sort of situation even with rigid set it still isn't working very well for that so simple corrections is going to work beautifully cutouts where you want to move bits around or where you want to move the uh, the person so that they've they've got a slightly different set to the way they're standing works beautifully um, it does affect the whole image every little piece you pull around affects the whole image um, and will slowly start to pull the pull the image apart the more you try and do with it but I, I do think it's got potential. Um, I think at the moment it, it falls a little bit short of um, of everything I'd like to see it able to do. Um, but uh, a, a certainly an interesting and fun tool that could potentially be extremely useful. <music>this video was an extract from photo walkthrough an online video show about photography and digital photo editing using photoshop and lightroom if you'd like to see more you can find all the old shows and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com